Determine if vector f is a conservative vector field. If so, find the potential function. So here we are given a vector f in R3, so we can let these components be f, g, and h. And the first thing that we need to do is check if this is conservative. So what exactly are we checking again? So let's recall that we need to check does the partial derivative of f with respect to y equal the partial derivative of g with respect to x? Does the partial derivative of f with respect to z equal the partial derivative of h with respect to x? And does the partial derivative of a g with respect to z equal the partial derivative of h with respect to y? And if all three of these equivalence properties hold true, f is conservative and we can find the potential function. So here we go. We have our f component is y plus 2z, and we need the partial derivative of f with respect to y and the partial derivative of f with respect to z. So partial derivative of f with respect to y is 1. Partial derivative of f with respect to z is 2. Moving on to our g component, we have this is defined here as x plus 3z, and we need the partial derivative of g with respect to x and the partial derivative of g with respect to z. So the partial derivative of g with respect to x is 1. Partial derivative of g with respect to z is 3. And last but not least, we have the h component, which is defined here as 2x plus 3y. So we need the partial derivative of h with respect to x and the partial derivative of h with respect to y. So the partial derivative of h with respect to x is 2. Partial derivative of h with respect to y is 3. So we got to check our work here. So does the partial derivative of f with respect to y equal the partial derivative of g with respect to x? Sure does. Woohoo. So we can say, therefore, since 1 equals 1, but we can't stop there, we need to check does the partial derivative of f with respect to z equal the partial derivative of h with respect to x? It sure does. So we have that since 1 equals 1 and 2 equals 2 and... Last but not least, does the partial derivative of g with respect to z equal the partial derivative of h with respect to y? And thank goodness it does. Oh, look how fun. 1, 2, 3. So we have since 1 equals 1 and 2 equals 2 and 3 equals 3, we have that the vector field f is conservative. Hooray! So... What does this tell us again? This is telling us that we can write the vector field f as equivalent to the gradient of phi. Or in other words, f, g, h, the vector f, g, h is equivalent to the vector with the partial derivative of phi with respect to x, partial derivative of phi with respect to y, and the partial derivative of phi with respect to z. This is also letting us know that the potential function exists. So that's what we need to do now. We want to use this to find the potential function phi of x, y, z. And so pick your favorite partial derivative and start there. So I'm going to start with the partial derivative of phi with respect to x. So that means we're going to integrate here with respect to x first. So we have that phi is going to be equal to the part or the integral of the partial derivative of phi with respect to x dx. So this is the integral of y plus 2z dx. And this integrates to y plus 2z times x plus that arbitrary constant function g in terms of yz. We'll use this as a reference point. We have phi thus far is, I'm going to distribute my x. This is going to be xy plus 2xz plus the arbitrary constant function g of yz. So this is not our final answer. We think to ourselves, hmm, we've got to find this arbitrary constant function. So... find g of yz. The first thing that we're going to do is take this in, or take this 
initial potential function that we found and differentiate it with respect to y. So I'm going to take the ddy of both sides here. So if the ddy of phi is equal to the ddy of what we just found, xy plus 2xz plus the arbitrary constant function g of yz. And so we find that the partial derivative of phi with respect to y is equal to x plus the partial derivative of g with respect to y of yz. And we can make a little love note here to ourselves that since the partial derivative of phi with respect to y is equal to g because f, our vector f is conservative, we know that this is also equal to the, the g component x plus 3z. So we can set what we just found equal to this. So we have x plus the partial derivative of g with respect to y of yz is equal to x plus 3z. And we want to isolate our partial derivative of g with respect to y of yz. So we subtract x from both sides, which leaves us with 3z. And so we can now take this and we'll integrate it with respect to y. So we have the integral of the partial derivative of g with respect to y of yz dy is equal to the integral of 3z dy. And this gives us, giving us a little more room, that g of yz is equal to 3zy plus an arbitrary constant function h of z. So we're one step further here. We now want to take this first arbitrary constant function and plug it back into the initial potential function that we found. So plugging this back in, therefore, we have that phi, which is equal to x of yz plus 2 of xz plus, and so again, we're replacing this g of yz with what we just found here. So that's plus 3z y plus h of our last remaining variable z. So again, we'll use this as a reference point. We're not quite done yet. We still need to find h of z. But we're going to use the same process that we just used above to find g of y z. Let's give ourselves plenty of room. So we need to find h of z. So to do that, the first thing that we need to do is differentiate this initial potential function with respect to z. So we take the d dz of both sides. And so we're left with the partial derivative of phi with respect to z is equal to 0 plus 2x plus 3y plus the derivative of h with respect to z. And again, we'll make a little love note here to ourselves. Since our vector field is conservative, we know that the partial derivative of phi with respect to z is equal to h, which is given to us here as 2x plus 3y. So we're going to now equate this to our step from above. So we have 2x plus 3y plus the derivative of h with respect to z is equal to 2x plus 3y. And we want to isolate h prime here. So we subtract 2x and we also subtract 3y from both sides, which leaves us with h prime of z is equal to 0. So we're now going to go ahead and integrate this with respect to z. So we have the integral of h prime of z dz is equal to the integral of 0 with respect to z, which leaves us with the function h of z is equal to 0 plus c. And we don't need to leave it like this. We can just 
say that h of z is c. And so we finally now can take this final constant function and plug it back into that second initial potential function that we found to attain our beautiful final answer. So we can say, therefore, the potential function So we have phi is equal to xy plus 2xz plus 3zy plus that h of z, which we just found to be c. And so this is our beautiful final answer.